Hare Krishna. Take on Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, text 25. Sutta Karmani Avidvam Soyata Kurvanti Bharata. Kriya Vidvam Sutta Sutta Chikirshuru Loka Sangrama. As the ignorant perform their duties with attachment to results, the learned may similarly act, but without attachment, for the sake of leading people on the right path. Tak jako nevědomí konají své povinnosti a ulpívají přitom na výsledcích, učení může také jednat, ale bez ulpívání s cílem správně vést všechny lidi. Report. Thanks to Vaisvaya Sesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. A person in Krishna consciousness and a person not in Krishna consciousness are differentiated by different desires. A Krishna conscious person does not do anything which is not conducive to development of Krishna consciousness. He may even act exactly like the ignorant person who is too much attached to material activities, but one is engaged in such activities for the satisfaction of his sense gratification, whereas the other is engaged for the satisfaction of Krishna. Může dokonce jednat naprosto stejně jako nevědomý člověk, který příliš ubývá na hodných činnostech. Jeden z nich však tímto způsobem jedná, aby uspokojil své smysly, zatímco druhý tak usiluje o to, aby uspokojil Krishna. Therefore, the Krishna conscious person is required to show the people how to act and how to engage the results of action for the purpose of Krishna consciousness. Pro osoby vědomé si Krishna se tedy očekává, že lidem ukáže, jak jedna a jak použít výsledky svého jednání v zájmu vědomí Krishna. So, there is a common misconception that people think that spiritual life means inactivity. Že je tady taková celkem běžná miskoncepce, když si lidé myslí, že duchovní život znamená nedělat nic. They think that if I stop acting, then I'll be free from karma, there'll be no reactions. Myslí si, když já přestanu jednat, tak budu osvobozen od karmy a nebudu žádné reakce. But that's not possible to stop acting. Ale to není možné přestat jednat. Because the nature of the living being is that he is active. Protože povahou živé bytosti je, že činá. Even the attempt to stop acting is an activity. Dokonce i jako ta, to, že se snažíme přestat jednat, je jednání. So he thinks I'm not, I'm stopping myself, I'm not doing anything, but he's acting to stop himself from acting. On si myslí, já teď přestávám jednat, ale on jedná, aby přestal jednat. So, simply not possible to stop acting. Takže jednoduše není možné přestat jednat. Even when we go to sleep, the mind is acting, we're dreaming so many things. Konce, když jdeme spát, tak mysl je pořád činná a nás se zdá tolik věcí. The hair is growing, the food is getting digested. Rostou nám vlasy, tráví se jídlo. Activity. Jsou všechno činnosti. But some people think, well, then I'll just commit suicide. Ty lidé si říkají, tak já prostě spáchám sebevraždu. But committing suicide doesn't stop the activity either. Ale dokonce ani sebevraždu nezastaví činnost. Because the soul a living being cannot be killed. The only thing that happens when one commits suicide is he destroys the body, so the body is no longer a fit vehicle to keep the soul. Jediné, co se stane, když někdo spáchá sebevraždu, že on zničí to tělo, takže už není dále možné, aby mě ta duše přebýval. But after giving up this body, he'll get another body, which will be a, a more degraded body than this one. A potom, co opustí, bude nucen opustit tohle tělo, tak dostane jiné, které bude degradovanější, než je to, které má teď. Rather than trying to stop action, 
one should try to purify the desires. Takže spíše než přestat jednat, bychom se měli snažit očistit své touhy. Nothing wrong with action. Nic na nejednání není nic špatného. Depends on the consciousness. Všechno závisí na vědomí. If one works very hard for fruitive results, then he becomes entangled and overwhelmed by karmic reactions. Pokud někdo velice těžce pracuje kvůli plnostným výsledkům, tak se zapletá a stává se vlastně podmíněn karmickým karmický reakcem. But if he works very hard for serving Krishna, then there's no entanglement and there's no stress. Ale pokud on stejně tvrdě pracuje pro Krishnu, tak nejsou, není žádné zapletení a není žádný stres. Or in the case of Arjuna, he was a warrior, so Krishna was asking him to engage in his occupational duty as a warrior. A v případě Arjuny, Arjuna byl bojovník a Krishna ho žádal, aby on se zaměstnal ve své předepsané povinnosti jako bojovník. But for Arjuna, that was completely spiritual activity. A pro Arjuna to byla čistě duchovní činnost. But Arjuna, in the beginning, he thought that fighting was material. Ale na začátku si Arjuna myslel, že boj je hmotný. And he said, I would prefer to go to the forest and give up the fight. A říká, já bych se radši vzdal toho boje a šel do lesa, vzdal z toho boje a šel do lesa. Krishna said, no, it's better to do your duty as a warrior, but fight with the proper consciousness. Ale Krishna říkal, ne, ty radši bys měl bojovat, ale měl bys bojovat se správným vědomím. Not for your pleasure, ne pro své vlastní potěšení, but for so everything can be done for Krishna's pleasure. Even sex indulgence, which generally speaking is done for material sense gratification. It can be done, performed for the pleasure of Krishna. Se dá vykonávat pro poděšení Krishna. One has to learn the science. Musíme se naučit tuto vědu. The science is that whatever Krishna wants becomes spiritual. Věda je, že cokoliv Krishna chce, se, se stává duchovním. How do we know what Krishna wants? A jak víme, co Krishna chce? Well, Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita what he likes. He tells what types of food he likes to eat. He tells how he would like us to engage in activities. He tells us what things he doesn't like us to do. For example, he says, perform your duty, but don't be attached to the results. Říká, říká, vykonáme svou povinnost, ale nebyl přibudaný k výsledku. And the duty means the duty given by Krishna. A povinnost znamená povinnost, kterou dává Krishna. Krishna or Krishna's representatives. Krishna nebo jeho zástupce. Just like, for example, if someone is working in a bank. A příklad, když někdo pracuje třeba v bance. So, they're working in the bank and they're being maintained. They've been given a certain amount of income for them to take care of their necessities. And that's sufficient for their necessity, for, for them to live. Similarly, everyone has an occupation and it will provide su- sufficient for their necessities. A stejně tak každý má nějakou svou nějakou své zaměstnání a tomu dodá dostatek prostředků, aby mohl jako žít. But if going back to the bank, if a cashier, she's counting the money as it comes in. Se vrátím k tomu příkladu s bankou, jaká poklad, pokladní, ona tam počítá ty peníze, které přichází do té banky. And she thinks, oh, look how much money is coming in today. A říká se, nepodívejte se, kolik peněz dneska přišlo. Uh. I only have a Ford car. Yeah, I only have a Ford car. 
And I know one friend of mine has a Mercedes. A vím, že jeden můj přítel má Mercedes. So if I take some of this money, I can also have a Mercedes. A když si nějaké ty peníze vezmu tady, tak můžu taky Mercedes. Mercedes. Don't, don't. If she does that, then she's involved in sinful activity. A pokud to udělá, tak se zapleze do hříšných činností. She should be satisfied that by my work I'm allowed to use a Ford car, so that's that's my karma, that's what I accept. Someone else may have a Mercedes, that's, that's their karma. One should be satisfied with gains which come of their own accord. But not to perform some activity which is improper to get my desires. Imagine she steals the money and then she writes down, she changes the deposit slip. She's taking a big risk. If she's caught committing that activity, then she has to go to prison. And in order not to get caught, she's full of anxiety. And then she takes the money, she buys the Mercedes. But she can't drive the Mercedes to work because they'll know. She has to leave the Mercedes at home. And she has to keep the Ford also. So she has a Ford for going to work and the Mercedes for going to other places. And she has to tell the people that see her in the Mercedes, don't tell anybody from work that I'm in this Mercedes. She's in so much anxiety that someone will find out that she has a Mercedes. So it's difficult for her to enjoy even the Mercedes. Takže se pro ní stává velice obtížný užívat si pití toho Mercedesu. This is what happens, we become implicated in material activities. To se stane, pokud se necháme podmínit hodnými činnostmi. It's like, if you go to a place where poor people live. Například, když půjdete na nějaké místo, kde žijí chudí lidé. And generally they leave the door open. Obecně mi nechávají otevřené dveře. They're not so much locking the doors. Moc se tam nezamyká. Uh, because they have nothing to steal. So in one sense, they're less an anxiety. And rich people, they have security, doors, guards, dogs, electric wires. Attorneys. Attorneys. Lawyers. To protect all their assets. They're full of anxiety. So, the idea is we're entitled to do our our duty, but we're not entitled to try to enjoy the results. Because those results don't belong to us. The results belong to Krishna. He's the enjoyer of all sacrifice. So someone may say, well then how do I eat? You eat because Krishna has provided for you to eat. He has, he has arranged for you to get your necessities of life. So someone may say, yes, and if I work 14, 16 hours a day, then Krishna will provide me more for my living. No, now you're trying to 
You're trying to take more than you need. Ale ne, teď se snažíš si vzít víc, než jako potřebuješ. Well, because Krishna says you're you're supposed to do your duty, but you're not supposed to over endeavor. Krishna říká, ty máš konat svou povinnost, ale nemáš se příliš snažit. You do some work, and then you spend the rest of the time chanting and hearing about Krishna and spiritual activities. Ty máš pracovat jako jak je to nutné, a ty tak času potom stávají duchovními činnostmi jako čtení, objevování. Cultivating, cultivating higher consciousness. Kultivování vyššího vědomí. Yes, because if you don't take care of that and you simply work to try to get more gratification, then you become entangled. Protože když ty budeš pořád jenom více víc pracovat, tak se jenom zapleteš. Because you're, everyone has to do some activity to maintain themselves. Protože každý musí vykonávat nějakou činnost, aby se udržel. But if we try to take more than we require, then we become implicated. Ale pokud se snažíme vzít si víc, než potřebujeme, tak jsme podmíněni. In this way, if one lives in that balanced, peaceful way, then he won't be an anxiety. A proto, když někdo žije tímto vyrovnaným mírovolným způsobem, tak nebude v úzkosti. It's like this. Presently, we have the system of credit. So credit is not a very good system. Because people want to enjoy more than they can pay for. So in order to try to enjoy something more than they deserve, then they have to pay interest. Užívat víc, než je jim dáno, tak musí platit úroky. So that means they're paying a tax for that extra enjoyment. To znamená, že oni z toho svého požitku navíc platí daně. But then that puts a big burden, because now not only do they have to try to get the money that they didn't have before, but then they have to get more, because they have to pay for the interest. A to na ně jest. Jako pokládá velké břemeno, protože nejenom, že oni teď musí vydělávat ty peníze, které předtím neměli, ale ještě musí vydělávat víc, aby mohli splatit úroky. A pokud se jako přihodí nějaká ekonomická změna, tak jejich pozice je teď velmi bolestná. Simplify. Simple living, high thinking. There's no need to acquire more and more things for sense gratification. There is an example of this story from the Vedas. There was a famous prostitute. Her name was Lokahila. And she was so famous that it cost a thousand diamonds to have her association just for one night. Byla tak strašně slavná, že za jednu noc v společnosti musel člověk zaplatit tisíc diamantů. So there was one man, he was a, attracted to this prostitute. But he was a, a leper. He couldn't do anything. But he had a very faithful wife. So she would, she would carry him around in a basket. And she was always trying to make him satisfied. But she noticed that her husband was up unhappy. So she said, my dear husband, why are you unhappy? She said, no, I can tell that 
All right, if you must know, there's this Boca here uh, prostitute. I, I very much want to be with her, but it's too expensive. I can't afford it. So the wife, she would go to the prostitute's house every morning, very early, and she would clean the whole house. And she would leave before the prostitute woke up. A odešla předtím, než se ta prostitutka zbudila. So she did this for a long time. Měla to dlouho. Finally, one day the prostitute woke up early and said, Ah, it's you that's cleaning my house. A jednoho dne se ta prostitutka zbudila dřív a viděla, ah, to seš ty, kdo upízí můj dům. Why are you doing this? Proč to děláš? I'm not paying you. Já ti neplatím. She said, I'm doing this because my husband wants to be with you, but he cannot afford it. Já to dělám, protože můj manžel z tebou chce jako být, ale nemůže se to dovolit. Well, if you kindly agree to satisfy him, he'll be very happy. So, plus, oh, I bring your husband tomorrow night. So, she brought her husband in the basket. The prostitute received him very nicely, sat him down comfortably. And he was so happy. He was just overjoyed. And she, she said, now I'm going to serve you a meal. And uh, she served him a very nice dinner with two, two types of bowls. One was a clay container and one was gold. So she said, please taste from both the containers. And he tasted and she said, which do you like better? He said, it's the same, same thing in different containers. And so she said, why have you come here? <laughs> It's the same activity, sex with your wife, sex with the prostitute. Simply in different containers. So, this is unnecessarily being attached to something more than one deserves. Should be satisfied with Whatever is set aside for me as my quota, by the Lord, I should accept that. Not be envious of someone else. Now, in Krishna consciousness, one can perform all kinds of activities. But none of them will be material. For example, you may see a devotee of Krishna go to the bank with money. You may say, aha, see, he's a materialist. He's going to the bank. The union, what's the union? Monetary. International. He's going. He's putting money in the bank. He's he's a materialist. But is he a materialist? No. Because that money, if you ask him, what are you doing with that money? Why do you have money? I thought you were supposed to be a spiritualist. But he said, this is not my money. This is Krishna's money. Uh, you're just saying it's Krishna's money, but you're spending it. Uh, what are you spending it for? And then he gives a breakdown. See, we're paying for distributing publishing books about Krishna. We offer, we bought some food for the offering to Krishna. We're paying for the 
house for the Krishna lives in Krishna's temple. No, také tady platíme nájem za dům, ve kterém Krishna žije, za chrám. Those things are for Krishna. Tyhle věci jsou pro Krishna. Now some people, they go further, they say, we still don't believe you. You say you're buying the food for Krishna, but you're eating it. We know after you offer it to Krishna, it's still there, and then you eat it. It's just a trick. You're acting like you're a spiritualist, but really you're a materialist. You say that Krishna owns this temple, but you're living in the temple. It's just another trick. You say you're very renounced, but I see you have beautiful women in your temple also. What about that? So, because Krishna doesn't say that a devotee can't have nice things. He likes the devotees to have nice things. He doesn't say, you're a devotee, you can't eat nice things. Or he doesn't say, you're a devotee, you can't have a beautiful wife, you must have an ugly wife. No, he never says that. He never says you must eat food that's not very nice. He never says you have to live in a very um, poor place. No, he says, come, live with me, eat with me, live with me. I'll arrange everything for you. So that's the difference. A devotee says, Krishna has invited me to live with him, to eat with him, so I'm accepting. Whatever he gives me, I accept. And Krishna is saying to you, you also come and live with him and eat with him nice food. So why don't you accept? If you accept, then you enjoy it on the level of Krishna. That's the difference. The difference is, a devotee only accepts things that are given to him by Krishna. For example, in the Brahmacharya Ashram, the students, the students are trained to live with the Guru and they won't even eat food unless the Guru asks them, now please take your meal. This way he learns. That I'm dependent on Krishna. And Krishna supplies all the necessities. Even the elephants and the big animals, they get their food. Who's supplying? God, Krishna supplies their necessities. Well, certainly he'll supply the necessities of the devotee. The devotee is giving his life for Krishna. Krishna is very much appreciative. Thank you very much. This is a few points to think about in spiritual life. If there's any questions for clarification, Trying to answer. So he's uh, many times he's, he's meeting people on the street who say that uh, they already have two jobs, you know. And still, they can only cover, you know, their bare necessities. So, how to preach to those people? This attitude that they don't need more. Or... Yes, people have to understand that 
I am I'm only going to be given what I am supposed to destined to get. Tyto lidi musí pochopit, že já dostanu pouze to, co mi je souzeno dostat. I can work as hard as I like, but that doesn't mean I'll get more. Já můžu pracovat tak tvrdě, jak chci, ale to neznamená, že dostanu víc. It's like there are some people they work very hard. I know one person who works so hard, and he always gets cheated. They never pay him. Jsou někteří lidé, kteří pracují velice tvrdě. Třeba já osobně jednoho znám, který pracuje velice tvrdě, ale pokaždé ho podvedou a nezaplatí. Work so many hours a day, and then at the end, I say, so you got the money? No, they didn't pay me. On pracuje tolik hodin každý den, a nakonec zase se tam tak co? Dostal se zaplaceno, ne, 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 to se And someone else, he spends a few hours, makes a few phone calls, he makes millions of dollars. A někdo jiný pár na pár hodin řídí pár telefonátů a má milion dolarů. So it's not a question of work, it's according to one's past karma. Takže není to žádná otázka nějaké práce, ale naši minulé karmy. It's like a trust fund. Je to jako takový ten fond. You know, trust fund. Trust fund means, let's say your great grandfather, he was very wealthy. So he set aside some money for you in the future. Takže tady ten trust fund, to je jako když nějaký váš třeba dědeček byl velice bohatý, tak mohl dát stranu nějaké peníze pro vaši budoucnost. So that money will be Every month it will be coming to you automatically. And if you, whether you work or you don't work, of course he may stipulate that you should work. But if you try to get more plus that, then it will be deducted from the trust fund. Pokud by se budete snažit tak vydělat si navíc, tak to se odečte z toho, co vám má přijít z toho. So it's a perfect system for you to get just what you deserve according to your past activities. Takže to je dokonalý systém, který zařizuje, že ty dostaneš pouze to, co máš dostat na základě tvých vyloučitostí. So you can explain to those people that working harder doesn't mean you'll get more. Takže těm lidem můžeš vysvětlit, že to, že budete víc pracovat, neznamená, že dostanete víc. Actually, what Krishna wants is You perform your work, but do it for me. And I'll supply your necessities. So in other words, the, the person, he's working two jobs, he's struggling, he's getting his maintenance. But he's in anxiety and his consciousness is low. Ale je v úzkosti a jejich vědomí je velice nízko. Whereas if he served Krishna with the same energy, then his consciousness would be very high and spiritual. Ale zatímco kdyby on stejně tvrdě pracoval pro Krishnu, tak jeho vědomí by bylo velice vysoko a duchovně. That's how it works. Takhle to, pra- takhle to funguje. To serve Krishna, he supplies what you need, but you get very high consciousness also, and you're happy. Když sloužíš ke šlomě, tak stejně dostaneš to, co máš dostat, a navíc ještě máš velice vysoké duchovní vědomí. Byla řeč o tom, že si vlastně, když ke šlomě prošlo něco pěkného, takže není problém si toho užít. Tak mě zajímalo, jestli to není na úrovni jako příliš nebezpečný. Na, 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 na jaký úrovni? Podmíněný úrovni. Když jsi ve tom procesu, že něco pěkného, tak jestli to není jistě v tomhle smyslu. So this question is, uh, you mentioned that Krishna is not against us, you know, enjoying or not enjoying, but having nice things. But uh, the problem is that on the, for our level, it may be dangerous, you know, when we are conditioned. So how to approach from this end? Yes, don't try to take more than you, than Krishna gives you. Nikdy se nespíš snažit vzít si víc, než si Krishna dává. If Krishna gives you a nice, uh, delicious food as prasada, then you accept it. Když ti Krishna dá nějaké krásné a chutné jídlo jako prasada, tak to přijme. So don't take a nice prasada. I'll go and take the whole, of the whole big uh, container at home and keep it for myself. Ale jestli si něco dá, tak já si teď to tedy celý ten barel odnesu domů a bude to jen pro mě. Take your quota. It's like the birds. If some grains are spilled from a bag, the birds will come, take a few grains, and fly away. Jako ten příklad, když někde rozsypeš nějaké zrní, tak přiletí tak, 
Zobne si jenom těch pár zemíček a zase odletí. Ale muž přijede jako s autem a naloží tam všechno. So just take what you need. Don't over, overdo it. Si pouze co potřebuješ, nesmíš to přehánět. If you overdo it, then that's a cause of fall down from spiritual life. Když to přeženeš, tak to je potom důvodem poklesnutí duchovního života. Yoga means you keep the balance, not too much, not too little. Yoga znamená, že držíš rovnováhu, ani moc, ani málo. Don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Nejs ani moc, ani málo. Yukta hara vihara se. Yukta chaste sta kama su. Yukta svapna vavoda se. Yoga bhavati dukha. If you just take moderate, not eat too much, not eat too little, not sleep too much, not sleep too little. Then you can practice yoga. Když budeš usměrněný, když nebudeš ani, když nebudeš jíst ani příliš, ani málo, když nebudeš spát příliš nebo málo, tak potom můžeš vykonávat jogu. If you eat too little, you're so skinny and weak, and someone says, "Can you help me?" I'm too weak. I can't. Když budeš jíst příliš málo, tak budeš takový hubený a slabý. Když někdo řekne, "Můžu jim pomoct?" Tak ne, já nemůžu. Co bude? And if you eat too much, then you become sleepy, and someone says, "Can you do some stretch?" No, I'm too tired. A když se budeš zase přejdat, tak budeš pořád ospalit, když ten druhý přijde, jestli mu pomůžeš, tak než já se nevím. Když najít to rovnová. Tak se to zeptat, že jestli to znamená, že když něco chci, tak se to prostě nevím, že to v dispozici. A nebo počkám, až mi někdo třeba naloží ten kvůli na sám. To je si můžu dělat ještě na lovici. Jestli je to svůj vlastní, jakoby... A nebo počkám, až někdo přijde a dám. You wanted to ask if this means that if there is something nice available, then if we should, you know, make our own effort to get it, for example, go ourselves and give the, you know, put the prasad on our plate, or if we should wait for someone else to come and put it on there. Then, the teacher called, huh? Jestli to je tvůj příděl, tak to můžeš vzít. If it's more than your quota, then no. Jestli to je více než tvůj příděl, tak bys neměl. Mahaprasad, no, you can eat it. Mahaprasad, no, to můžeš si vzít. You can even steal Mahaprasad. Můžeš to moc zekrát. You have to be careful who you steal it from. Jsi být opatrný, komu to krade. How do we know what is our quota? Otázku, jak teda, když to lepší poznáme, co je to náš příběh? Well, everyone is given duties by their spiritual master. Že každému jeho povinnosti přiděluje jeho duchovní mistr. Because everybody is supposed to have a spiritual master. Že každý by měl být duchovní mistr. Because life, human life is meant for spiritual advancement. Že lidský život je určený duchovnímu pokroku. How can you make spiritual advancement without a spiritual master? A jak chcete dělat duchovní pokrok bez duchovního mistra? So you have to have a spiritual master, and he gives you your duties. Ty musíš mít duchovního mistra, a ten ti dává to potřebné povinnosti. So if you engage yourself in performing those duties, then naturally you'll eat just the right amount. You'll know what your quota is. A pokud se zaměstnáš v těch činnostech, tak přirozeně budeš vědět, jako jaká je jaké to správné množství, jaká je tvůj příjem. And sometimes we have difficulty with that. A někdy s tím můžeme mít problémy. Especially with the tongue, it's very difficult to control. Zvláště jazyk je velice těžké ovládnout. It's very easy to become attached to eating opulent foods. Je velice snadné přivoutat se k jezení nějakých bohatých pokrmů. More than we require. Nebo víc než je potřeba. We're supposed to eat just to keep the body and soul together. Měli bychom jíst pouze, aby jsme udrželi tělo a duši pohromadě. But generally we eat for taste and for filling up the belly. So then we find out what happens. When it's time for Mangalarati, <laughs> but the Guru told me to go to Mangalarati. But I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping because I ate more than I needed before. So I have to learn. No, I must have eaten more than my quota because I couldn't go to Mangalarati. Takže z toho jsem si poučil. Já jsem asi třeba snědl více, než mi přijdeš, protože jsem nemohl jít do Mangalarati. So that's one guideline. 
Make sure you don't eat so much that you can't go to Mangalarti. To je jedno takové vodítko. Nejeste tolik, abyste nemohli jít na Mangalarti. Okay. Make sure that whatever you do, it doesn't interfere with your carrying out your duties, your spiritual duties. Musíte zajistit, aby cokoliv, co děláte, vlastně nezasahovalo do vykonávání vaší duchovní povinnosti. It's like a car. We, we need a car, let's say, to use. Třeba auto, dáme ten příklad, třeba potřebujeme nějakou dobu použít auto. So, okay, we want to use a car for Krishna service. Je ok, chceme použít auto pro Krishna službu. So, take what you can afford. Tak si musíme koupit to, které si můžeme dovolit. But if you get a very fancy car, and extremely opulent vehicle, then you're always afraid the insurance is very high. Someone may want to steal it. A pokud si koupíte nějaké velice opulentní, nějaký drahý bus, tak potom budete dostávat plný úzkosti. Má to být tam velice drahé pojištění a budete se furt že vám někdo zničí nebo ukradne. Just like uh, Sudama Vipra. He was a very poor Brahman. He was a friend of Krishna, but he was so poor. To třeba Sudama Vipra. On byl přítelem Krishna, ale byl velice chudý. He wasn't disturbed, he was happy. He wasn't envious that Krishna, my friend Krishna is so wealthy and I'm so poor. He thought, Krishna knows my position. He knows if he gave me opulence, then I would probably become puffed up and proud and I would forget him. Se říká, Krishna moc dobře zná mou pozici a ví, že kdyby mi dal víc, aby se pravděpodobně nafouknul a zapomněl bych na něj. A to je to, proč mi to, ten důvod, proč mi to Krishna nedal. So better not to pray for opulent things. Takže lepší je se moc nemodlit to bohatství. You may pray, oh, my, Krish, my dear Krishna, please give me one million dollars. I want to do some nice service for you. Že jsem bude toho Krishna prosím, že mi milion dolarů, já chci udělat nějakou pěknou službu. But you may get the serve the million dollars and then you may forget to serve Krishna. Ale můžete dostat milion dolarů a zapomenout na tu službu Krishna. You fall in the mind. I've seen that. I've seen em- envelopes come in the mail. Já jsem to viděl, viděl jsem, jak přichází poštou obálky. New devotees, you say here, this letter is for you. Nějaký nový oddaný a přijdou peníze, podívejte, to tohle. Opens the letter, see, and then he's gone. On od té doby se otevře, podívá se a už je pryč. He got some money and go out. Dostal peníze a odešel. To spend for my own. A my je utratil za my own. So yes, we have to be careful about desiring to get something more than we require. Musíme si dát velký pozor na to, aby jsme nechtěli víc, než kolik potřebujeme. Yes. Já jsem se chtěl jenom zeptat, jak vlastně člověk má chápat takové věci, jako je třeba osud, jo, že Třeba má pocit, že v životě udělal nějaké chyby a někdo, kdo se v těch věcech vyzná, nějaký astrolog mu řekne, jo, že to bylo jeho osud, že je udělá, tak jak vlastně vůbec chápat tohle, jo, že... Já bych teda, jestli to člověk mu poptázku. Jako, jak to, jak to prostě vnímat, když vlastně má pocit, že udělal něco špatně, ale že v jeho osudu bylo, že to tak udělá. Kde se moc nucený to udělat svým osudem. No, že kde se může potom rozhodnout teda jinak, jo, jako... Yeah, so this is a general, pretty common question uh, regarding uh, destiny. When uh, we do something and it's wrong, or it appears to be wrong, then some astrologer or someone tells us, yeah, this was your destiny to do it. You should, have, you should be doing it. So how to understand uh, this, uh, you know, that we are forced to act by our destiny? Where is the choice? In this? That's not exactly correct to understand. To není úplně to správné pochopení. I am, according to my past, I am inclined in a certain way. To správné pochopení je, že kvůli své, to ta moje minulost mě nutí, en teda nenutí, ale dává mi jako sklon jednat nějakým způsobem. But it doesn't mean I have to act in that way. Ale neznamená to, že já musím jednat tímto způsobem. I may be, just like a, uh, the animals, 
When they're inclined in a particular way, they always act that way. But a human being has the opportunity to act in a way that's beyond his inclination. In other words, he can get some higher association. If he associates, for example, with a Brahmana, and the Brahmana teaches him principles of higher consciousness, then he can act like a Brahmana. Například, když se bude združovat ten člověk s brámanou, který ho naučí jisté principy vyššího vědomí, tak on může začít jednat jako bráman. Even though he was born in a different family. Dokonce, když se narodil v nějaké nižší rodině, jiné. No, he has the choice. To znamená, že on má volbu. For example, let's say we read in the scriptures that we should not steal. Například, dejme tomu, že jsme si přečetli písme, že bychom neměli krást. But let's say I'm from a group of thieves. And that's my business dealing. I read in the scripture that you're not supposed to steal. So I have a choice. Another example, there was a hunter. He was half killing animals with his bow. And one saint came there and saw all the half-killed animals. And then he saw the hunter, he said, who's doing this? Hunter said, I'm doing it, I'm trained, my father did it, he, his father did it. So many generations we're doing this, half-killing the animals and watching them die, suffering. We, we enjoy that. <laughs> A on odpověděl, to jsem udělal já, to mě naučil mu otec a jeho to naučil jeho otec. Už tolik generací tohle děláme, že vždycky takhle mrzačíme to zvíře a pak se koukáme, jak v lesnech umírá a užíváme si to. The same told him, this is very bad, you're causing so much suffering, you'll have to suffer in hell for this. Ale ten světel jsem povídá, no ale to je velice špatné, ty tady způsobeš tolik utrpení, takže budeš muset trpět v pekle za to. And he explained it so nicely, that the hunter said, OK, Okay, I, I don't want the sinful activities. What should I do? A my se to to tak pěkně, že ten lovec se zarazil, říká, jak já už nechci dělat žádné hříšné činnosti, tak co mám dělat? So the hunter said, break your bow first thing. Svět ten svět řekl, tak nejdřív našel zlom svůj luk. He said, if I break my bow, how will I live? A on řekl, ale jestli zlomím svůj luk, tak z čeho budu žít? He said, don't worry, I'll take care of that. Když se nestane, já to zařídím. So he believed that he broke his bow. The saint said, now, you just give away all your things, take your wife, go to the riverside, make a little hut, and take Tulsi, you worship Tulsi, and I'll send all your food. So he did it. And the people in the area, they were bringing food, giving it to him. So here's an example. He was a hunter, and he was accustomed to hunting. It was his inclination to hunt. But by association with someone in higher consciousness, he made a higher choice. On mohl vlastně se rozhodovat na vyšší úrovni. So, my karma may be, as they say, I'm born under a bad star. Někdy se říká, jako já jsem se narodil pod špatnými hvězdami. I'm inclined towards evil activities. Já mám sklony ke zlým činnostem. But if I'm fortunate and I associate with a saintly person, then I can act according to his direction. Ale pokud mám to štěstí, že se můžu združovat se svatou osobou, tak potom můžu jednat podle jeho pokyn. Not forced. Not forced. I'm not forced to act. I'm put in a situation. But how I respond to that situation, that depends on my choice. For example, a person becomes, let's say, deformed and poor. Due to past 
Sinful activities. Tak byl takový příklad, že třeba někdo se narodí velice chudý a nějakým způsobem zmrzačený kvůli svým milovým činnostem. And he, but it doesn't mean now he has to again perform sinful activities. A to neznamená, že i v tomto životě musí dále vykonávat ty čisté činnosti. He's suffering from his past sinful activities, but now he has a body that's deformed and poor. But if he makes now engaged in spiritual activities, then he's he's not forced to act sinfully. On už jednal dříve křesně, a kvůli tomu má to špatné zrození, ale teď on se může rozhodnout že bude jednat například na duchovní úrovni a to už to není nucen vlastně dál vykonávat ty všechny činnosti. He can't change his body being deformed. That's a result from the past. Nemůže změnit to, že má zmrzačené tělo, to je výsledek jeho minulých aktivit. So he should not try. Don't worry. That I'm receiving from the past. Takže o to by se neměl jako starat. To už to by si měl vědět, že to, to má kvůli své minulosti. But let me act now in spiritual activities so that I won't commit any more sinful activities. Teď by si měl uvědomit, že musí začít jednat na duchovní úrovni, aby už nepáchal žádné další hříšné činnosti. That's how it works. Takhle to funguje. You have a ticket to go to Hawaii. Tak řekněme, další příklad máš třeba letenku na Havaji. So now you're on the airplane. Takže teď sedíš letadle. So if you say, uh, you push the, you know, the button for the a tak to by nejde něco napadne, tak zmáčneš to tlačítko, přivoláš si letušku. Attendant comes, yes, what would you like? Ona přijde, jsem na co byste si přát. I change my mind, I don't want to go to Hawaii. Já jsem si to rozmyslel, už nechci letět na Hawaii. Take me to Moscow. Zavesta mě do Moskvy. We can't do that, sir. Ale tohle nemůžeme udělat, pane. So that choice you can't change. To je rozhodnutí, které nemůžeš změnit. You already purchased the ticket, you checked your passport, už jsi skoupil vlastně letenku, už tam dal ten pas. You signed everything, said you agree. Podepsal si všechno, že souhlasíš. You can't get, you have to go to Hawaii now. Teď už musíš letět na Hawaii. But now, okay, so you're on the plane. You can, you still have choices. Ale když jsi na tom letadle, tak pořád máš nějakou volbu. You can read a book. Můžeš číst knihu. You can sleep. Můžeš spát. You can drink. Můžeš pít. You can steal the person's wallet sitting next to you. Můžeš ukrát peněženku tomu, co se dělalo tady. Those choices you have. To bylo by máš. And you will take responsibility for those. A za ty budeš nést odpovědnost. But you purchased that ticket, you're on the plane, you can't stop now. Ale už jsi tady se koupil a seš letala, takže teď už to nezastaví. The only way you can get off that plane is when everyone's sleeping, you go open the thing and you jump. Jediné, co můžeš teď ještě udělat, je, že až všichni usnou, tak otevřeš ten nouzový východ a vyskočíš. Ale to je proti zákonu, takže to bys dělal ten děl. In other words, we're suffering for karma or enjoying, but what we do now produces our future suffering or enjoying. Takže my teď trpíme nebo si užíváme na základě naší minulé karmy, ale to, co teď uděláme, to rozhoduje o našem příštím utrpení nebo požitku. Okay, any other points? Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.